Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome here to Lake Chelan now as we are about to undertake our walkthrough of the under construction, the new hospital for the Lake Chelan Valley. As we have a number of folks we're going to have the chance to visit with today as we make our way through the tour. And uh, we'll begin with some familiar names and some familiar faces right off the get go, beginning with George Rorick, the hospital administrator, CEO. And George, let's talk about Number one, as we all pan over here and let folks get a look at the uh, building under construction right now, and you can see the big crane there is uh, well up in the air. And George has been an active site and a lot has happened since we were here for the official groundbreaking, uh, which now occurred a while back. Yeah, you can see, um, as you said, there's a crane in the air. Uh, we got walls going up. Um, the building is starting to take shape. It's still, it's still growing, it's still getting larger. Um, but the goal right now, the overall goal, the next big goal in, in, uh, for me is getting her weather tight in November so we can build through the winter. Well, it's been, as we mentioned, it was April 25th, I think, or thereabout, that they had a 23rd, excuse me, had the groundbreaking here and had about 100 folks from the community come out for that. And I know a lot of people have kind of been driving by the site here and taking peaks at different times. And it seems like you can wait three or four days and it has a whole different look when you come back. But how exciting is it for you as the administrator of this hospital to know you have this new building coming into the fold and uh, it won't be that far away now you're gonna be able to operate in these new digs? Oh, this is very exciting. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it almost doesn't seem real. So. All right, I love the smile on your face. We're going to get to walk through a little bit uh, later here and get a look at the exterior initially, let people know where things are. There's a uh, smiling, happy face guy, Fred Miller, longtime board member for the Lake Chelan Health and formerly Lake Chelan Community Hospital. Fred, uh, again, I'm going to kind of pan over here and we'll let people watch some of the equipment working here. But how about you? What's it feel like knowing this is coming to fruition? Basically, finally. Uh, conceptually, we started this 15 years ago. We've refined the design, the needs, all the time, right up until this last spring, in essence. But it's really an exhilarating time. We've waited a long time to get to this point, and we really thank the community for supporting us and passing the bonds so we had the needed funding. In your view, Fred, again, you've been involved many, many years with the hospital. How great is the need for this new facility? substantial it's really great uh, equipment new technology and stuff like this our existing building isn't designed electrically and other things to be able to handle that this will set us up for the next 20 to 40 years there'll be adjustments in that time frame but we need this to, to go ahead for the next 20 years and we'll also talk to one of your uh, members on the board here mary signorelli hi mary always a pleasure thank you it's and good to uh, be here. give us your thoughts as well. Well, as Fred said, it's been a long time coming, and uh, and it's exciting to see that we are where we are in this process. Another year, and we'll be inside the building, uh, functioning as a hospital, as a healthcare facility. And the um, the fact of the matter is, is our hospital district is in better shape than it's been in a long time, and we're really pleased to be able to. Um, to be able to offer this facility to the community. And they have worked so hard, the community has. Like Fred said, for the last 15 years, it's been thought of and planned and and one step at a time. And <laughs> finally we're here, or close to being here. So I, I'm excited as a, as a commissioner to be able to be part of this. Well, as you mentioned, Mary, there are lots of up and downs uh, to get to this point. Yeah. Uh, yes, the public passed the bond when you needed it. There was a long wait on getting uh, funding uh, uh, loans to come through on that. Then there were changes in the uh, layout of the hospital, the square footage, all those things. But now that it's finally been put to bed, uh, I know you wanted it to happen sooner, but it must right. feel pretty darn good right now. It feels very good. and. You know, it looks so big, but you consider we're in three stories right now. We're um, a little bigger than our present um, hospital, but when you spread it out over this 12 acres, I mean, it's pretty impressive, you know, and, and it's going to be quite quite a, a, a godsend to the community because it, it is needed. 
And of course, we're right here on Apple Blossom Way, off Apple Blossom Way, uh, in the area of Walmart and across from uh, Columbia Valley Community Health. The main access will be off of the Apple Blossom Way here. And what you're looking at, as I understand from looking uh, at the designs earlier, you would be driving in down past the facility you're looking at right now. There would be parking to your left here in front and there would be some parking back around on the back side as well. The emergency entrance would be down that way. But Mary, you ready to go for a walk? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll limp along, I'm sure. But I'll be there. I'm ready. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's do this. When we say let's do it and we're going to do a walk, uh, the first person we're going to go to here is Josh Bell. Josh, come on over if you would real quick. This is Josh, so you know whose voice you're going to be hearing here in just a little bit. And uh, Josh is from Boughton Construction, the... Uh, general contractors on this project. He is the project site superintendent. He's here on a regular basis, sees what happens day in and day out. Josh, I'm going to hand you this microphone so I can walk a little easier and video a little easier. So uh, let's just start walking and tell us what we're looking at right now. So yeah, as we're walking here, we see the main front entrance here, and this is the main feature of the building. Uh, we have the right to the right here is the main entrance as you work down towards the south to the left that's where the kitchen and uh, cafeteria are at and this will be parking right in here yep right here is parking as you get closer to the building uh, there is a canopy that is outside the front entrance here and then there's also a canopy around side where the emergency entrance is at. I would assume here is where there'll be a pretty visible signage for the hospital then at the main entrance? Correct and out front. And out front. Yep. All right, excellent. Do you want to go left or do you want to go right? Why don't we go to the right here? Okay. So as we walk this way you can see this truck ahead of us it's pretty much the main road right there that'll be permanent once the civil is complete. We'll wrap it around to the emergency department entrance. It might be well to point out that this is a very dusty site and we've got right in front of us here a water truck and there's a continual spray of water throughout the site every day just to keep the dust mitigation down. Keep the neighbors happy. Keep the neighbors happy and keep the city happy. Okay, and uh, that is uh, Dick Bratton, who you're uh, listening to there, the overall project manager, and uh, we'll be hearing more from Dick later, but we'll continue to saunter, and I'll do my best to keep this camera as level as I can. The terrain a little uneven, so I'm trying to look at the screen and look at the ground at the same time. And uh, where he's backing that pickup truck right now, what is, what is this area? So this is just the windows that you have right here, and on the other side as you walk in, that would be our lobby. Uh, so you got your main entrance, there's a lobby waiting area right there, and as you continue through the building, you go into the other areas of trauma, and, and uh, when we take a tour inside, we'll go through all that. Okay. So as we come up here, what you see is the ambulance uh, entrance here, and this footings that you see dug out for, uh, that's going to be where the main entrance that wraps around um, has a large canopy that over extends over the top of it and as you walk more to the right over here as you pan over you can see we have uh, the MRI loading dock hey Dennis if you can get a, a picture of the top of the wall there um, that's really the full height of the wall as it's going to be constructed and then the roof will be put over over that and there will be uh, a screen on top of the roof that will hide the HVAC, heating, ventilating, air conditioning equipment as well. Will it be a pitch roof at all? Or? No, it's a flat roof. Flat roof, yeah. okay. Just pitched enough for drainage. Any solar going to be a part of this project? No. Okay. Now, is there overflow uh, parking here then for like the emergency area? The other parking lot that's back here? Is, uh, is I thought that was um, the staff parking. Yeah, there's staff parking behind the building. Yep, it's not call, you know, overflow. Okay. But there's dedicated parking areas, again, mm -hmm. per city requirements and per code requirements for emergency. And those parking areas are situated very close and adjacent to the emergency uh, walk-in area. Okay, yeah. all right. And again, the so, total acreage of the site? 12 that we're on. 12 acres, is that the total yeah, site? Yeah, 12, 12 acres. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. All 
Alright, we're getting to the back side. The west side of the building here, if my directions are correct. Yep. So as we wrap around to the back side here, uh, you'll see we've got pan over to the left once we get past these blocks. That is where the MRI station will dock up to, that opening over there. As we come around to, the, to this other side here, we also will have a generator and an oxygen tank. So we'll keep walking around here. Josh, any idea how many yards of concrete have gone into this project already? Uh, I would say about 11 to 1,200 cubic yards. And is most of the concrete pouring done at this point? Yes. Slab on grade is 95% complete. Uh, what we're coming up on here, uh, you'll see some stem wall footings. Uh, this is the loading dock area, so this is where semis can back up to these two double doors up here, uh, unload from there. Okay, pause in a second. I want to get a shot of this, okay. All right, so they'll be able to come right up close to the building then. Oh, they'll back right up to it, yep. And as we come to this southwest side here, this is our LDR department, LDRP. There's 12 rooms. All right, we're getting into acronyms and uh, initials. LDRP, give us L the uh, definition. Labor Delivery Recovery, LDRP, oh. Recovery. Oh, I would anyway, have to, we'll go back to that. Having babies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Labor <laughs> Delivery Recovery. Uh, you see a bunch of boulders, if you can key in on those, and then over uh, towards the neighbor there. Uh, this site was known to have boulders before we started excavating, and once the site clearing started, there was uh, quite an accumulation of boulders that were remo removed from the site. Um, so we're staging an area over here to keep some of the boulders on site as well. Yeah, big pile over there. Right. So these these were kind of unknown conditions that were taken care of during the site clearing okay. and excavation. Another pile back here. Pivot around again. Again, we uh, thank you for being a part of the walkthrough tour here of the under construction Brand new hospital for the Lake Chelan Valley. And we have representatives from Lake Chelan Health here and the contractors as well as we do the tour. Again, this is the uh, labor and delivery area that we're looking at right now. And again, uh, you, you told me at one point that, uh, I know and I'm sure it varies from day to day almost, but Josh, you have sometimes 40, 45 workers here on site. Correct, we have about 40 to 50 uh, workers every day. That's a busy group. It is. <laughs> a lot to keep track of. And I'm going to guess a part of your job is the logistics of all that. Yes. Yep, pretty much. Uh, scheduling, making sure everything is on time, ordering material. Now, overall in the project, uh, it's a 16-month project, as I understand it, from the beginning. So we're, what, five-plus months into things now? Correct. And how about uh, in terms of sticking to a schedule and trying to keep abreast of all that is that working yeah we're on schedule though all right great let's continue to move yeah. another feature to point out uh for everybody is that of those 45 or 50 actually josh had about 55 out here uh yesterday those um are comprised of about seven or eight trades of work <coughs> including mechanical electrical uh, masonry uh, concrete uh, labor crews, um, starting to get some uh, drywall layout for the interior walls, and a couple of other trades, uh, site work trades on site as well. So there's, at any given time, there's seven or eight other firms out here, along with Bowton Construction as the GCCM running uh, the project. Great all, that you can do all that work at the same time. Right.
So tell, Dick, before you hand that over, um, again, a lot of people that uh, are, you know, coming through in this process, and you hear so much about construction now that uh, there are delays in certain areas and in certain sectors of building because of the supply chain as a result of the COVID situation. What has this project been like in that regard? Have you been able to get your hands on pretty much everything you need or have there been some slowdowns? Well, for the last 18 months or 20 months now, we've known about the situation uh, impacting, not only potentially impacting this project, but potentially impacting uh, projects all throughout the U.S. And we've taken measures to ensure that material deliveries are on time and that uh, requires early material ordering and logistics planning with uh, suppliers. So to date, we haven't uh, been affected by material shortages in delivery. Uh, had this project started three or four months later uh, than it did, then uh, I would have probably a, a different and more negative answer about that. And again, it looks like Mother Nature has lent a hand as well. Weather's been good. Well, this is Chelan. The weather's <laughs> never bad. Yeah. <laughs> now, what are we looking at? This looks like one of those slowdown lanes for a truck. It's coming down off a steep grade. What do we got going on here? Well, I'll let Joss explain this. <laughs> so this is our excess soils pile. So basically, this is all the soils from any footings, any trenching that's done for electrical plumbing. Uh, anything like that. This is the excess soil from those trenches and new clean soil went into the trenches backfill. Okay, now so, will this be at some point hauled away? So it will get shaped and some of this will move over to the west side over here, but uh, most of it's staying. Okay. Yep. Just push it around. Yep, yep. <laughs> Shape it so it's nice and uh, landscape it and call it good. Well, and I might add, the vertical element that you see now is quite tall and from a perspective it's probably about 25 feet above the existing grade that we've um, excavated out so a lot of that will be reduced down in height uh, what we'll call as a finished landscape berm for a storm drain off all right fair enough thank you for that Shot of our little entourage here as well as uh, we continue to make our way. We're making a, a walk around the exterior of the building here initially and eventually we'll end up inside and kind of give you an idea of where certain portions and areas of the hospital will be lying. And what's this pit? This is one of our infiltration systems drywall so right now what we what you see here is this has been excavated we test the soils for contaminants make sure that it's good uh, once there's no contaminants then we can finish the system that goes in more big rocks didn't think you had a swimming pool here <laughs> and as we walk around it might just pan out here, Dennis, and this is the, the patient wing. Oh, okay. Extending from uh, where you see the scaffolding there all the way out to the uh, masonry unit walls out there are, are the, the wing for the patients. Do you know how many rooms in that? There's 12. 12 rooms, oh, okay. Advantages of everything being on one floor? Yes. Well, from a circulation standpoint, from a hospital functionality standpoint, you know, it was assessed early on to look at a two-story uh, facility and certainly the availability of the property to put it on one level proved to be more efficient for circulation of the hospital. And um, quite frankly, it's uh, a little bit less expensive to, uh, to build one level versus two. So the advantages were there to do one level. Outstanding. So as we come around here, this would be the kitchen area. Mm. 
All right, we'll just warn our viewers that uh, we may be getting into a loud zone with equipment, so bear with us on that. But what do you expect? It's a construction site, right? <laughs> So kitchen right here? Yes, sir. So that that you see right there is a blocked out area. So the kitchen has a full tile uh, flooring in there. So basically that's blocked out. It'll be uh, recessed down a couple inches and then the tile bed will go in. For your, it's really great to be able to see a finished slab over here to the left. And then what we're looking at here is uh, some insulation underneath the rebar, which is temperature temperature steel to uh, to hold the concrete together, and then the stub ups of the utility piping coming out for water and power. So to the left is finished, to the right is a slab yet to be poured uh, with additional concrete uh, next week. This portion of the property here, it appears to be, you just use it for staging? Yeah, staging, and this is uh, for our masons right here. This is their mixing area. Okay. So that's where they'll mix up their mortars and grouts. And as you can see, there's block everywhere. That is part of uh, what Dick was talking about, and us getting material out on site ahead of us so that we don't get behind schedule waiting on material. And again, at completion, is this area that we're walking through now where things are being staged, is that parking? Uh, kind of tails end off over here, so the parking is more up in front okay. where you see these piles. This will be basically landscaping. Yep. Okay. And I suspect landscaping is kind of one of the finishing touches? Yes, yes correct. Yeah. We'll do that around springtime. All right, do we want to stop and maybe tell us what we're viewing from this angle? Well, this would be the um, east side of the dining room. So basically you'd walk in and uh, this would be the east side of that as you transition. This is the main front entrance to the building. Uh, the main entrance is over on the other side of the crane up there. And that's where we'll try to sneak in, see okay. if we can get in there. <laughs> might be a little, your lead. It might be a little loud. Well, if it's too loud for you to uh, tell us what we're seeing, we can always recap when we come up on the other side, come outside. Sure. Yeah, so if you want to show uh, just a, a screenshot of the of the wall here, maybe Josh could explain why we've got yeah, so wood framing on the windows as temporary. Yeah, so basically that wood framing that you're seeing up there is just a block out so that the mortar can set up inside all the blocks and grout can set up inside all the blocks above there. Um, once that sets up for a minimum of 10 days, we'll remove them and then window frames can go in. There's rebar that goes horizontally in there uh, that's grouted in and that's what gives it its strength. And then the green towers that you see in front here, that's all the scaffold for the masons. All right, so kind of a temporary support basis there, just to make yep. sure everything gets solid. Correct. They actually just grouted this section today, so this scaffold will be coming down tomorrow and moving over to the next section. Can we stop for a moment here? I just want to do a little pan over to put the site in location. What we're looking at over here beyond our construction site that is CVCH, uh, that is Columbia Valley Community Health Clinic over there. So if you were unfamiliar with this site and where it's situated, uh, there it is. And then beyond that, uh, you might be able to see in the distance the Walmart sign. So this single story structure uh, is approximately 54,000 square feet, is that correct? Correct.
approaching the main entrance? Correct, main entrance up here, and then as you can see the holes that are around here, these are footing holes for the canopy that goes on this side. And again, does all that kind of work uh, happen pretty much when things are wrapping up towards the very end? No, absolutely not. We're oh, okay. getting ready to set these footings and uh, pour columns. And then uh, basically once the iron workers wrap up with the steel, uh, the structural steel on the inside of the building, they'll jump to the outside of the building and finish it. It ties to the, the building itself and then they're done. All right. So we're coming in the front doors. So as you walk in the front doors here, this would be the entryway vestibule. To our right. This is waiting. A waiting room here. Correct. And as you come forward here, we'll get into triage and trauma. Trauma is off here to the left. And if you pan down on the ground, doesn't you can kind of see the lines where the, the walls are going to be. It doesn't help much for everybody, but uh, you can kind of get a visual of where stuff's going to be at. So where were the check-in desks? Right back there. Okay. And then as we're looking over here in this direction. Yep, this is trauma about where the McKinstry guy is at. And as we walk through the building, I'll kind of break down where the ORs are at, okay. uh, where the X-ray room is at, CT. So we walk towards this end. We have a few exam rooms up here. Would you say, based on you know seeing other facilities, are these are pretty typical sized rooms for exams and whatnot? Yeah, yeah, they're good sized rooms. So this opening. That's okay. Go ahead and hold it up. We'll yep. Uh, this this opening that you see here is where the MRI dock will be at. So the MRI will back up down in this little area, marry up to the side of the building, and that's where the MRI is at. As we're walking through the areas here, so the buildings broke up into basically six sections, A, B, C, D, E, F. And we just walked through area E, we're now getting into area D. And D has the uh, X-ray, CT. Looks like we have some welding going on up yep. above. Yep. We should get a shot of the uh, electrical spaghetti. Yep. We will have to probably come around that way and go around, stay out from underneath him. Feel free to narrate, I'll follow along behind you here. We'll get okay. Just come on this way. We're going to sneak around the scissor lift here. Here's our the main electrical room is located. Here's main electrical room. We got Energize Electric out here installing underground. Let's try to get out from underneath this guy. And as we transition over here into area C is where the two OR rooms are gonna be at. See, there's a lot of stuff going on. So let's take a look in here. Let's go this way. Nope, nope. Oh, that is okay. actually the backside. That's our loading dock area. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yep. yep. All right. ORs go into this right area. Here. Yep. Okay. And then where will those end about the OR rooms? How far out? Uh, right around this grid line here. Two good sized rooms. And as we keep on walking. Okay. 
And as we get further down, we have a pharmacy and a lab. So where you're about to walk here yesterday, this concrete was poured. This was one of our last lab pours. Looks uh, fresh. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's good to walk on though. Okay. Yep, you're good. So pharmacy adjacent to the lab then? Yeah, pharmacy is actually back here. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then we can walk over here. Here's again our LDRP rooms. And there is 12 of them. Then what we, will the uh, what what will the roof be on this building? Yeah, it's flat, but what, what material? It's a TPO, okay. so it has insulation and it actually has a jit board, a membrane, insulation, another membrane, and then flashing up to the parapet walls. Are there any type of like heaters in that roof area for winter time? Yep. So you've got three large rooftop units. Uh, two of them are located in the first area that we kind of, that we walked in. The area is E, e and D, uh, and then the third one is above the LDRP area, which is that room back there. Uh, those are the three big units, and they're small fans and stuff like that throughout. Uh, but you have three main units. If you pan over here again, here's the kitchen block out. Yeah, close up of the kitchen now. And I know it's always deceiving when you look at things under construction like this, but uh, that's a, a probably much larger than it appears. Then on the back side of that is the, the dining area. So you have your kitchen and then your dining. Now, any portion of what we walk through, are there like staff areas? Absolutely, yep, there's staff areas. Most of the staffing area uh, is along the back side of the building. Okay. You have electrical rooms, data rooms, uh, IT, all that. Staffing rooms, staffing lockers, lounges. Yep. Yeah. In particular care, if you want to go down here, oops. <laughs> Try to keep you on mic. There. Handing over the mic. <laughs> this is kind of the long run. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's about, yeah. what, 350 feet? And and the setback areas, and I don't know if your camera will get this very well, Dennis, but the setback areas are dedicated for public space and for waiting. Um, so it was really important to be able to accommodate the public in comfortable waiting areas in a hospital uh, scenery. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a long run there that we're looking at. It is a long run. And we're not even at the end of the building yeah. quite. And, and even from the exterior to have the articulation back and forth of the exterior wall, uh, you know, kind of mitigates that, that bowling alley effect of a long run like this. All right, we are speaking in case you joined us late. This is Dick Bratton, the overall project uh, director of the new build for the Lakeland Hospital here. And we talked a lot about, you know, where you're along on things. What are some, Dick, what are some of the benchmarks time-wise of what will be coming next in these phases of construction? Well, one benchmark was yesterday, and that was pouring the final slab. That was October 4th. Uh, there's a little bit more concrete to pour next week, but, you know, essentially... We had five zones poured out in five uh, different weeks every Friday and kind of missed a Friday and, and did a Monday pour um, for, for our last one, for the, the fifth one. But, the, you know, the next main milestone is to get the roof uh, structure up and finished and then get the roofing on. Um, the enclosure of the exterior walls of the building will be done uh, in four to six weeks and then you know, we're really looking forward to putting up, um, since you did ask me before, are there material shortages or delays? Well, there are long lead items that are built into the schedule. And some of those long lead items are associated with the storefront and with the window systems that go 
within the, the masonry walls. So in order to enclose the building and be able to heat it up in the wintertime, we're going to have to put up some temporary screening for, for these window openings for the, those fenestrations. So Dick, we're here in early October. Uh, I know you say the weather's always nice in Chelan, and it is for much of the year. Not uncommon to get snowfall by Halloween here uh, in our Lake Chelan Valley. Is, is the hope to kind of get everything buttoned up before the dead cold of winter then? Well, that's the hope. I, I, yeah, I live on the east side. I live in Bellevue, so I experience this once a week out here. But, uh, you know, I hear about snow coming in in late October and lasting until April. Mm. Uh, Fortunately, we have a very experienced contractor headquartered in Spokane that's very accustomed to working on the east side and through central Washington who knows how to handle the situations regarding weather impacts. Uh, the goal, of course, is to get the building closed in before the, the dearth of bad weather uh, finds itself in Chelan. If you're able to get that done, does that then allow work to be done on the interior well, work through will the be, winter? Yeah, work will be done through the winter in the interior, regardless of the weather. Okay. <laughs> it, it must be. I mean, there, you know, 60% of the value of the project and the schedule is within inside the building. So that work continues at a very aggressive pace, I might add, well, with, the, with probably more... Uh, a larger staff inside the building where you have finished trades going on as well. Okay, okay. I was curious about that. So numbers yeah. might actually increase the yeah. workers. I mean, we'll have HVAC, uh, heating, ventilating, air conditioning folks uh, that will be doing s some of the dry side or the, the, the tin work for, you know, duct work. And, and at, at any given time, there might be eight or ten guys uh, walking around in interior scaffolding, hanging up... Uh, some of the the sheet metal for duct work okay yeah and that's again only one trade there'll be uh, half a dozen to eight or ten electricians uh drywall which is gypsum wallboard uh being applied to metal studs there'll be uh, a very large crew of of that um trade as well All right, have we pretty much done the route? Anything we haven't talked about in terms of what's going to be a part of this hospital? Well, I think you, you've seen the perspective of the hospital. You've seen kind of the environment of the exterior. Uh, certainly nothing's finished yet. You get a perspective of um, the volume and, and how the footprint is laid out. Of course, it's hard to see without a plan in front of you, but Certainly, hopefully, everybody can appreciate that, again, this is a, a busy site, it's a valued site, and, you know, a year from now, it'll be a very important site when the public can have use of it. Dick Bratton, project manager here, I want to thank you for your time, Dick, and helping to squire us around, and if you'll pass that off very quickly here to Josh, just momentarily, Josh, I want to thank you, we appreciate thank you. the tour, it was uh, informative, and... Uh, actually turned out to be a great day for the tour. Yeah, thank you. All right, thanks so much for your time. And then I'm gonna pass it over here once again to Fred Miller. Fred, now that we have completed the tour, your thoughts, what do you think? Very impressive. Uh, when you see it on paper, it all flows nice. And you get out here and start walking, you realize just how much effort and size is involved in this. And uh, it's just impressive. Yeah, I'm looking down that, that long length of this uh, shot of the concrete that's been poured all the way, the uh, most extreme length of this building, and uh, that's a long ways. Yeah, our employees are going to be in good shape. <laughs> Put them on rollerblades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have little routes. We may have a hustle. floor escalator like they have in airports. Huh? There you go. All right. Well, we thank you for that, Fred Miller. And Mary Signorelli has been here as well, and uh, she disappeared somewhere. I don't know. Okay, she had an appointment. There's Augustine. Say hi, Augustine. Hello. Hello. Dennis, thank you so much for coming out here and doing this for us and, and uh, getting an inside peek for the community and providing this to them. We hope to bring you back in the future so we can kind of show everyone where this is at in you know, several months from now because it's, it's quite impressive, and I'm excited for, for the future of this, this uh, facility. 
Well, I appreciate all your help, Augustine, in, in putting this event together and getting all the bodies lined up. George, one last comment from you before we uh, sign off here from the all-new Lake Chelan Health Hospital under construction and uh, going to be done before we know it. But yeah. uh, impressive tour. Less than a year. Less than a year. And, you know, the way time's moving by, even during this COVID time, um, it'll be here in no time at all. Dennis, thank you so much. Look forward to you coming back when we can see some new things and different things. We look forward to it as well. I'd be remiss, and I want to ask, we're not going to go into a lot of detail, but I'm just curious, with the new hospital being built, all the pressures, George, being applied on hospitals because of COVID times right now, uh, how has the situation been handled at Lake Chelan Health? How's it been going at the hospital? Well, you know, we've been working hard to uh, straighten out things that need straightening out at our, at our house. And then, of course, you know, I, we have to say we've gotten some good support from the state and the federal government to keep us going uh, or we probably would have gone bankrupt like most hospitals big and small you know when you have to shut down all your business for months and you have no revenue coming in but everything going out um, so uh, that helped take the edge off those hard hard times a year ago um, but you know we're still not back to normal but uh, we're pretty close and things are improving and getting stronger every day what about the pressure of staff and you know nurses, doctors, everybody having to work through these COVID times? You know, um, that's true, and it's everywhere. Um, it's not just here or there. Um, and then, you know, the, the whole mandatory vaccination thing, you know, pressed uh, folks that didn't want to do that into a, into a difficult corner. Um, and so organizations have lost what I read is, you know, 1% or so of their, of their workforce to that, that action. Um, was it good? Was it smart? Yeah, you know, you can argue both sides of that. I'm not going to. Um, uh, you know, we have a great team, and they've hung in there, and they've worked hard, and they picked up extra shifts, and taking care of things um, on a day-to-day, -day, throughout the day basis, they thought they would never do. Um, God bless them. George Orrick, Hospital CEO, we appreciate your efforts. Thanks for joining us on the tour today. And again, I want to thank everybody that uh, showed up here to be a part of our walkthrough of the new Lake Chelan Health Hospital. 54,000 square feet, one level, approximately $44.5 million project, and uh, about a 16-month build-out that we got about another 10, 11 months to go to get things wrapped up and done. For now... Dennis Rahm on site at Lake Chelan Health's new hospital here on Lake Chelan Now. Thanks for watching.